here. We are just six weeks out from the election, but what we're seeing here is that just like in national polls, the votes here are neck and neck. We've been having people right on this whiteboard over the past few months. The senior engineering sergeant of the A-team says that this is just some of the equipment they have to wear every day. This alone is 50 pounds. He says that besides the physical aspect of training, people need to be aware mentally. And for the second time in less than a week, an unoccupied building in Antlers has been destroyed by fire. There are a number of different fire crews you can see over my left trying to work to put out this fire over my right shoulder. You can see the fire, the flames coming out. Meredith, we're actually here with the First Baptist Church pastor, Luke Holmes. Luke, thanks so much for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, kind of what you're experiencing right now? Good morning. It's Friday, June 24th. I'm Sarah Strackhouse. Here's a look at 10 things you need to know this morning. Tensions continue in Carter County as Milton Anthony appeared again in court yesterday. Many of the alleyways they said are already pretty clean. As you can see, this one is. But take a look inside this dumpster. They're taking it a step farther. Other people have said that they've already decided who they want to see in the White House. The debate is not going to change that. So far, it's been a pretty crazy evening. It started off, it wasn't bad. It was just some dust, just some light wind. Then Many question why. Why a middle school music room? Why a well-known church? They stated uh, during the uh, interview with them, they stated they were bored. Bored, something emergency responders were not Friday morning. <laughs> Investigators say it all started off when 19-year-old Jared Diggs and 20-year-old Tyler Hammond stole a motorcycle and then took off when they were spotted. And it all was downhill from there. While law enforcement was searching for the two, police say Diggs and Hammond were beginning their first rounds of setting fires to some of the town's landmarks. Our first call came in about 4.15 and it came into the middle school. During that, that fire, we received a second call about 05.10 this morning of the fire that we had here at the Baptist Church. It's something in people living in Tishomingo say they just don't understand. It's just kind of senseless that somebody would do something like that. Well, it's horrible. This is such a, a, an iconic church in our community. It's, we're just heart sick about it. We really are. But we'll fix it. Baptist Church Pastor Luke Holmes reminds us that while it's a sad loss, it could have been much worse. You no, know, a church is uh, not a building, it's people, and so we're glad that God kept everyone safe. And Safety has been a priority on everyone's mind. The church pastor, as well as fire officials, all say that thankfully they're just happy that no one was hurt, and they want to make sure that everyone gets home safely today. And there's more to be thankful for. The beautiful thing about living in Oklahoma, everybody pulls together and gets it done. We uh, have a lot of good firefighters, and they came together, and we saved what we could today. Reminding people it takes a village to keep a town safe. That's why it's always good if you see something suspicious, nothing wrong with calling it in. Reporting in Tishomingo, I'm Sarah Strackhouse. Happened in a matter of minutes, and this is just one of the houses along Stark Lane that was hit by the storm in Howe. It's just pretty much unbelievable. You always think it happens to other people, not you. Yeah. Those are sentiments felt by those in one home that was damaged and family members here to see the aftermath from the tornado that ripped through. You don't think about someone that can just be taken from you um, at any time, but um, I'm sure it'll be kind of an uphill battle to get everything rebuilt. I mean, it's obviously totally <laughs> gone. Gone except for one wall in the main family room, bordering Connor and his grandmother's hiding spot. You know, and me and her were just standing right here. You know, she sat down at first and, uh, you know, I got on top of her. And Neighbors say, like through. Connor and his grandmother, they were all lucky. A little bit of a war zone, I guess. Uh, a lot of debris flying and the uh, first thing I noticed was uh, ears started popping and then the world kind of starts spinning around a little bit. Like I say, it's all stuff. It all can be replaced. Some were very lucky. Right here is what was crazy because this was our path to the bathroom. They got in there just in time. Now all that's left is to rebuild their homes and their lives brick by brick. In how I'm Sarah Strackhouse. The race to the White House. It was a common phrase on most media outlets, but what we didn't hear was what you had to say in Texoma. So we decided to hold a little election of our own using a whiteboard. Here's a look at what we saw. Two competitors, 
one position. I think that's called the mother load. A lot of think... noise and distraction. He tells the country that he will. We'll make America great again, okay? She says we are. Stronger together. We heard from them all campaign, but we really wanted to hear from you. Lady Clinton. Donald Trump. Hillary. Trump. Don't like them, either one of them. We wanted the slate wiped clean and for voting to be more than the push of a button. So since June 2016, we've been using our White House whiteboard to tally up the votes for the candidate Texomans want to see in the Oval Office. Uh, he'll get this country straight, straightened out and get everybody back to work. She is more qualified. I think he's got a good financial background. and Can't support that he doesn't uh, even acknowledge global warming. Our first time out was during the Republican National Convention, and Trump was leading with a 7 to 1 ratio. The second time was just after the Democratic National Convention, and the ratio was 3 to 1 with Trump still in the lead. The third time we polled was about halfway through the race, and Trump barely led with a 2 to 1 ratio. Many still saying they're undecided. The fourth time was just after the first debate, and the ratio was 5 to 3 with Clinton trailing. The fifth time was after the vice presidential debate, and Trump was a solid lead with a 4 to 0 ratio. The sixth and final time we polled just two weeks before the election was a dead even heat across the board. The biggest question on the ticket now? What do you think is the most important issue that our country's facing right now? ISIS. I would say the um, terrorists. The economy. Stop ISIS. And we asked if the debates made you go back and forth on your pick. I think people have already made their mind up who they're going to vote for. So. Uh, I believe it would uh, if the people will look at it and, and take it seriously. Uh, really look at and investigate what they're hearing and what they're seeing. We spoke to hundreds, but not nearly as many would put pen to paper. You can write in whoever you want. Ultimately, the winner? Trump. 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 With 67.6% of the votes. Clinton. I can't wrap my head around voting for Trump. Hillary. Hillary. With 16.2% of the votes. And the last percent, if I ask you why, were some sort of a question mark. But one voter decided there was only one man for the job. Uh, I don't feel either uh, major candidate is worthy of a vote. There is no lesser of two evils. They're both bad. So my only way of protesting is to write in God. A candidate we can probably all appreciate. Trump's inauguration into the White House is set for January 20th, 2017. Clinton says she will not be contesting the outcome. For K10 News, I'm Sarah Strackhouse.